Now we are going to perform a spectral analysis on the data from one channel. This is the plot that we are going to be working towards in this video. So let's first focus on this thick black line here. This looks a bit similar to the power spectrum I showed in the first video of this module. So you see decreasing power with increasing frequency, and you also see two prominent peaks at 20 hertz and 24 hertz, corresponding to two of the stimulus flicker frequencies that were closest to the middle of the screen. Now in this experiment, the same stimulus was repeated many times, as I mentioned in the previous video when we looked at the EEG data structure, and it's also similar to the data set that we analyzed in module one. So there were somewhere around 350 trials, I forget exactly uh, offhand how many there were, but around 350 trials, and this, all these gray lines here show the power spectra from each of those individual trials. And then the black line is the average over all the trials. Now, these gray lines here, these are not MATLAB default line colors. So in this video, we are going to dip our toes into advanced MATLAB graphics by changing the color of these lines using plot handles. Okay, again, so now I'm going to switch to MATLAB. This is your opportunity to pause the video if you want to work through the code before I do. So we're starting here by soft coding a channel to plot. Soft coding is a term for setting up parameters that you want to run in your analysis at the top of a script and uh, setting the numerical parameters to be particular variables so that we don't need to keep redefining, you know, channel 22 multiple times throughout the code. Instead, we just define this one variable. This is convenient because then, you know, later on after this video, if you want to see, well, what does the spectra look like at channel 26? All you have to do is change this one value here instead of changing this in multiple places later on. Okay, so we're going to work with channel number 22. And here we have a loop over trials where we are going to compute the FFT, so the fast Fourier transform, of the data from one channel and uh, for each trial separately. Okay, so we initialize our uh, matrix here, channel power. You can see this is the number of time points by the number of trials or stimulus repetitions. Now it turns out that uh, in the Fourier transform, the number of frequencies you get back corresponds to the number of time points in your signal. So that's why we need to make this matrix be time points by trials. Okay, so here's our FFT function. So what we want to do is input the time series data from this channel, so it's gonna be eeg.data. And remember, actually, you know, let's say, so we don't have to you know, tax our, our memory here. We can just look at the size of eeg.data and this is going to help us figure out which dimension of the data we need to be working with. So we want the data from this one particular channel. So from chan to plot, let me actually close these two figures, we don't need them. Okay, so we want the data from this particular channel, all of the time points, and then from this particular trial. So we're looping over trials here. Okay, now there's a bunch of other stuff going on in here. So let's see, so this is the end parenthesis for the FFT function. And then I mentioned in the video that we need to extract the dot product. And what we get from the dot product is the magnitude. That's what we are interested in. We want the magnitude of the dot product from the Fourier transform. And that's given by the ABS function, which is for the absolute value. And then it turns out that for power, we square. So without squaring, we would get the amplitude and then we square and that gives us the power spectrum. So let's run these four lines of code and we don't get any errors, so that's always a good sign. Okay, now here's the question. Can you get the same result without using a loop? So can we reproduce this matrix without using a for loop? Obviously the answer is yes, otherwise I wouldn't have written this question. And in order to do that, let's open up the FFT function. Again, I'm just opening up the function file because I personally find that more convenient for reading the help messages. You can also get even more information about the functions by typing doc FFT. That opens up a new uh, window. It's like a, a, a MATLAB browser, and that gives you a lot of information, including some examples and some images. Sometimes this will tell you about the algorithm that it's 
uh, implementing and so on. But right now, I just want to look for this here. So we want FFT of X uh, empty and then dim. So this applies the FFT operation across the dimension dim. Okay, so this is really convenient. This means that we can write FFT and then we want the data from, so eeg.data. Again, it's from this channel, so chan to plot. And then we want all of the time points and all of the trials. Now, this second input is related to the N of the FFT, so how many points are being used for the FFT. We're going to input an empty bracket here, and that tells MATLAB to use its default value, which is the same that it would use here. Okay, now we need to specify which dimension. So which dimension do we want to compute the FFT over? Well, it's not gonna be over the first dimension because that's only one channel. It's not gonna be the third dimension because we don't want the Fourier transform over trials. Instead, we want the Fourier transform over time. So the third input is going to be two corresponding to the second dimension, which is the, the time points. Okay, and then I'm also going to take the magnitude and then we take the magnitude squared. In the previous module, uh, we also did something like this where we vectorized instead of writing a for loop. And there I showed you that uh, those two matrices were actually equal. In this case, you can just take my word for it that they are. Now let's look at the size of this variable, chan channel power. So size of channel power. So you can see it's actually still a three-dimensional matrix. It is a one by 2000 by 346 matrix. Now this is called a singleton dimension. It's a dimension with only one element in it. Now this can cause some confusion later on in the code for other kinds of functions. So I want to get rid of this. I want to tell MATLAB to take this three-dimensional matrix and squeeze it down to get rid of this singleton dimension. And the function we use for that is squeeze like this. So now I'm going to run this line of code again. And then we look at the size again. And now you see we've lost the singleton dimension. So now this actually is just a two-dimensional matrix. As I mentioned in the first video of this module, the Fourier transform is a really rich operation with a lot of details. One of those details is the way that you define the vector of frequencies. The short version of the story is that it goes from zero to the Nyquist frequency, which is half the sampling rate, in n over two plus one steps. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fourier transform, you don't have to worry about where this information comes from. The important thing is that this allows us to map arbitrary frequencies that are that, that are the output of the Fourier transform into meaningful frequencies of Hertz. Okay, so now let's go for the visualization. So remember, we want to plot two things. We want to plot all of the power spectra from each individual trial. So from each of these trials, we want to draw a gray line. And then on top of that, we want a thick black line corresponding to the average over all of these trials. Okay, so, and so let's start by plotting all the single channel data first. So we want the channel power, and then you can see this is a 2048 by 346 matrix, but the vector of frequencies hertz is only 1025. That's because we don't have the same number of, uh, or we're only interested in half the spectrum corresponding to the positive frequencies. So therefore, from this channel power matrix, we are plotting only the first number of elements corresponding to the length of this frequencies vector. And then we want all, here we want comma all, and this comma all is because we want to plot the data from all of the trials. Okay, so let's run these two lines of code. And now it looks like, you know, it looks like uh, two rabbits uh, dancing around in a snowstorm. That's just all white. And it, actually, if you look at the corners here, you can see there's some lines here. Now, this is because in this Fourier transform of these data, we have a really extreme high energy at very, very, very low frequencies. So I think we can already go down and pretty the plot a little bit. So I'm gonna restrict the X limit to go from five Hertz to 30 Hertz. You can see here, we're going from zero to 300. So I'm gonna go from five to 30 Hertz and that just zooms in on the plot. Now these lines are not light gray, the way that I showed in the slides. So we're gonna to need to adjust the colors. 
we're going to adjust those colors using this variable h. This h here is called a handle. It's a handle to each specific line that is being plotted here. So you can see that there are 346 of these corresponding to 346 trials. So in a moment, we are going to change the color of all of these lines at the same time using this plot handle variable. So I'll get to that in a moment. But first, we are going to plot the trial average on top. So here, now this line of code looks really similar to this line, except we have a mean function here. So we're taking uh, the, the power spectrum over all the trials, and then we are averaging. Remember, the second input into the mean function is the dimension that we want to average over. So again, do we want to average over frequencies or over trials? Well, of course, we want to average over trials, but we don't want to average over frequencies. That doesn't make sense here. So therefore, we want to average over the second dimension, not the pieth dimension. That's not even a, a valid dimension to average over. Okay, and then this specifies a black line with a line width of two. Okay, so let's have a look at this. And, hmm, so, so you can see that the x-axis limit went back to what it was before. And even when we reset that, so the average looks nice here, but we're kind of missing all the individual trials. Well, what happened here is that every time you run a new plot function, MATLAB is going to clear all of the previous information that was already plotted. Now, if you want to plot lines on top of other lines, you have to add hold on. See, right, hold on like this. Now, this is a function you've seen before, so this should just be review. Okay, so let's try running this again. And now, this probably looks better. Let's see if we can. I'll just run all of these things here. So this looks pretty good, except that we need to fix all these lines. Okay, so we're going to write set. We use the set command. This is pretty similar to what we're using here, except here we're setting the current figure. So get current, or sorry, axis, get current axis. Here we are setting H, which are all these handles to all the lines. So we want to set the color, and we can set the color to be, you know, white. This is not such a great idea against a white background, but, uh, or we can set them to be red. But this is a little bit limiting if we are only going to use these standard built in letters. So instead, I'm going to provide a three number code that's going to correspond to RGB. And these RGB elements need to be specified between zero and one. Now, if you prefer to specify your colors between zero and 255, that's also fine. You can specify them here as integers between zero and 255 and then divide by 255. That's just going to scale it down. Very nice. So I forget exactly what um, color code I used in the uh, figure in the slides, but it was it was a little bit lighter than this. Maybe let's try 200 and 200 like this. So, you, you know, you can, after the video ends, you can play around with this to find a nice set of colors that you like. So this is the successful completion of this video. Now, this was only for plotting one specific channel, plotting the data from just one channel. In the next video, we are going to start exploring how to visualize the data over all of the channels.